Death be not proud. Okay. What's up, you writing, book burning, unenlightened faggots? Holy Diver here, and I am doing a video response to, you guessed it, Little Wars TV again. And uh, this time they're asked, is historical war gaming dying? So, haven't I already proved that these guys don't know shit with my video? Take a look at it. Women suck at war gaming. Deal with it. That says it all right there. Look at your source that you're coming from, all right? But for once, these guys act, even a blind squirrel will find a good acorn or a nut once in a while, and these guys have found a good little nut. So, let's uh, get some presets set up for this argument. Number one, fuck Europe. Europe is out of the question. We're not going to talk about Europe. Number two, we're taking the UK off of the table. We're not going to talk about the UK. We're also removing Canada. New Zealand, whatever white people are left in South Africa, and Australia from this equation. We're going to talk about America proper. Um, when I when, if it, when I tell you when I ask if historical war game is di is dying, it is an emphatic yes. I've got some friends who are about a year and a half older than me. No, two years older than me. They're two years older than me. And uh, they don't give a fuck about history. They are 40K all the time, going balls deep into that shit. And the one thing they're good at is buying. I got a buddy, one of my buddies, really, really good painter, doesn't get a lot done. When he does get something done, looks pretty darn good. He blends color really well. He's also a decent artist. I've seen this guy, I've seen some of his drawings that he's in his sketchbook from high school really good but he, he goes into this one classic gamer I've got fuck you amounts of money and I he, he just wants to play you know uh, so I don't fault him there but he also uh, what do you call it I was good has ridiculous standards see my video it are your standards ri ridiculous all right and uh, that's my Greek showcase video so your sta uh, a lot of people, when they get into this hobby, they have ridiculous standards. And uh, some people would be better off buying one fucking army and just paying for it to get built and painted. And then fucking off after that. Because if that's all you want to do is participate, that is what you should do. Some people fight off more than they can chew, and they don't understand that wargaming is a lot of work. Wargaming is a lot of work. A lot of work. It's not just something you go into. I mean, you're better off if you have a little bit of modeling experience first because you go and you buy all this stuff and then you're going back to the store to buy paint, to buy glue, to buy files, to buy razor blades, to buy a handy dandy set of heavy duty clippers. Now luckily, in the old days, in the old days, you get a book, and I believe, let's see here, getting involved, scenarios, um, oh, I believe there was a section, oh, right here, painting equipment. They would give you everything you need to know about the hobby, right there in the rule book. And they would go over certain things, paints, tissues, newspaper, a water pot, a light. They would also talk about priming miniatures, uh, paint, paint schemes. And then they would also talk about, oh, look at this, stick painting to save time, uh, bases, just simple green base that'll suffice and everything right up there you know and they don't understand that it's a lot of work a lot of work they also give you painting a wood elf tutorial video and everything painting shields doing transfers painting banners and it, and some of this stuff is actually really easy um let's see
Um, painting banners, yeah, really easy if you just follow the instructions. A finished unit, a movement tray, um, converting. They give you a thing on converting. And uh, this is all kind of germane to the subject. It's a lot of work. Uh, modeling advice, they give you modeling advice in this thing right here. Uh, they made this awesome Strigoi with these blood wings and everything. And then they come to finally a finished army and what a wood elf army looks like and everything. But uh, your average dude in America that uh, wants to get, your average nerd is no longer really a nerd. When I'm talking about nerds, I'm talking about the lone gunman. Those guys were actual nerds. Nerds are smart. Most people are geeks and gamers. And they're basically the lowest of the low. They're a bunch of a bunch of them are a bunch of fucking slobs. Now, I'm gonna exclude the 10% of the Jedi Order that I talked about in my last video, the 40k consumer versus the collector. Alright? Uh, those guys who take 40k very seriously, but not so seriously. They've always got painted shit, and they have a couple armies under their belt, and it looks good, and this is just what they do as their hobby. You know, they play a video game every now and then, but they're always working on something, all right? So, that aside, uh, I can give you, I mean, just going over what I went over, that's the biggest reason uh, historical wargaming is dying. And this is why you see the onset of SPQR. Uh, I, I really do try to give it to Warlord. Warlords of Erewhon, there you go. That's the wave of the future, um, but right now, there's only one one channel playing that, and that's uh, Tabletop CP. Uh, this guy does actual physical historical war gaming, but uh, at the same time, you know, you uh, you play a small skirmish game for historicals. It's really not the same. I'm a fan of the big battles. I'm a fan of the huge collection. I'm a fan that you want to have uh, of having a 250 plus model count because I like the challenge. And most people do not like the challenge. Now, this is, and most people will keep buying shit they don't need that they're never going to use when they could spend their money on services. Most people are too proud to admit that they could just spend, too proud to admit that they need help and just buy services for their miniatures, all right? So, uh, you got a, you got a group of guys and, uh, the, and here in America, I'm going to tell you that the worst thing that ever happened was Age of Sigmar. Age of Sigmar lowered the standard for gaming forever and lowered every expectation. At the same time, it raised all your painting expectations. Uh, you know, in my last video about the collector, I was uh, talking to this guy in Greece, of all places, and he basically told me they waste all their money. Uh, isn't Greece a bankrupt nation? How, are they, how could they afford tabletop gaming in Greece? They waste all their money on the big centerpiece models. They paint them like shit and they don't care. They're having fun in this arcadey rule set where the bigger model you can buy, the better off you're going to do and the more you're going to stay relevant. In six months, everybody's getting brand new bullshit and everything's about to change again. We've had three Space Marine books, I think, in three years. Uh, and uh, let's talk about 40K in the States. I, I think that a lot of people who play 40K are kind of on the lower end of that autistic spectrum. There are 31 flavors of bullshit in that game, and they're called Marines. I, I, I think I could like the game just a little bit more if there were only Ultramarines and Chaos Marines. No other chapters! No other chapters. I don't give a shit about the guys who are rendered blue, and these guys are rendered gray, and then you got these guys rendered in silver and gold, and then some of them are rendered in purple. And then you got a, a whole spectrum of Marines that you can choose from, and they all do pretty much the same thing just a little bit differently. Well, mine are really good at close combat. Mine shoot really well. Mine have better flyers than you. And it's just, it, it literally is, it's like two guys whipping out their dicks and going, sword fight, sword fight, sword fight. That's what it's like to play 40K. I'm sorry. Um, it's not, you know, I mean, 
I, I think it would be a much more interesting game if uh, the other factions, you had Eldar and Dark Eldar, that's okay. You got uh, you got Tyranids and Gene Stealers. It's kind of one little thing that you can do there. Imperial Guard. Uh, what do you call those guys? Uh, orcs. Chaos Marines. And Ultramarines. And, oh, I forgot. Tau. And then maybe if you wanted to, you could throw in Crute or something like that. Or uh, Ogren. Uh, uh, you know, mercenary factions, you know. But no more than nine factions. I think that would I think that the game would be vastly improved. Now I know what you're gonna say. Holy Dimer, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know 40k! Ah! Yeah, you're right, and I don't give a flying rat's ass. But when you can get 24 models for the low, low price of six hundred dollars. Can I interest you in a butt fucking? Who's really out? Me or you? <laughs> you know? So uh, it's an arcade style game where, where stuff is shifting constantly and to stay at the cutting edge of 40k, you have to spend a lot of money, all right? But it's uh, the South free market capitalism works. It, it's the number one game. And it's, it's kind of sad that Warlord doesn't have a game in the number one here in the States. Um, it's, uh, it's a feat beyond uh, everything Herculean that Flames of War is in the top 20. So, uh, with only one game being a historical game at the company level, at a 15 millimeter level, being in the top 20, you can honestly say that historical war gaming is dying in the States. It's dying in the States because, again, your average person is a fucking slob. And they just buy things on impulse, and they give it a, ra they give it a whirl for a little while, and then they leave the hobby and they go back to playing their video games. And, uh... The, the problem that I have with uh, Little Wars TV is that, remember when I said in my one of my videos that uh, I, in my, I am a Wargamer video, that I would only recommend YouTube to people with a lot of time and money on their hands? These guys have plenty of both. Uh, I, I've seen them fire off their weaponry. They've got easily $200,000 to $300,000 in class three weaponry, fully automatic World War II weapons, Thompson's, Sten guns, MP40s, and uh, to have that kind of weaponry requires a lot of dollars, not to mention the costs of going to the range. You gotta pay your range fee unless you're out in a weird field somewhere. And then they're always drinking their top shelf liquors going, we're a fancy war gamers club, and then you go to their fancy war gamers club, and they have their battle across seven tables, and it's clearly their tax dodge. You know, I will admit, I am jealous that they have a space with which to play their games, and they probably have a retail shop attached to it. But at the end of the day, they started up a YouTube channel, and uh, then they plead poverty. This is the best part. They plead poverty like a bunch of dumb shits. Mr. Penn State pleading poverty. I remember the video, help wanted. We need someone to work for us for 15, 15 hours a month. You gotta edit our shitty videos for free. How would you like to join our team here at Little Wars TV and help us make incredible historical wargaming videos? It is incredibly rewarding, very time consuming, and totally profitless. Wait, what do you mean profitless? Well, Keith, I mean, we make no money. We are advertising for a volunteer position as a part-time video editor. We need to add another capable video editor to the team. We need someone with a passion for wargaming, some level of expertise with video editing, familiarity with Adobe Premiere Elements or Pro, and the availability to edit two or three YouTube videos per month. It's hard to know exactly what kind of time commitment that is because it sort of depends on how fast you are with video editing. But based on experience, I'd say we're talking about somewhere between three and five hours of work per week. Now we realize it may be hard to find somebody willing and able to do this job, but we're asking for your help. Everybody here on our team at Little Wars TV does this job for free. We do it because wargaming is our hobby and this channel is good for the growth of that hobby. We hope one of you will feel the same way and join us. Shut your bitch ass up! What the fuck you know about some Trish Montana, you old son of a bitch? 
They ain't trying to fuck my niece to that old throwback 90s slow jam shit. Nigga, I'll kill your ass. Fuck you in them red turtles, nigga. I don't give a fuck if you ain't worried about that, nigga. Ooh, I should kill your ass. See them mice still, nigga? I mean, shit got... Really? Mister can afford $300,000 in weaponry, needs someone to edit, and you must be good at Adobe Premiere Elements. Must be good at Adobe Premiere Elements. Please work for us for free. What does that tell you about Little Wars TV? They're a bunch of fucking pricks. As a matter of fact, if that dude, uh, I don't know his name, is it Justin? He's got the beanie on because he's covering that, that, that poor bowling ball head of his that's lost every single hair on top of it. I guess you can't have everything. You can't have all the money and education and the looks. Or if you do have the money and the good looks, it's not going to make your weenie any bigger, you dildo licker. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm out. <laughs> Dropping the mic on that one. You can't get everything you want. That guy, even though he's rich, he still probably couldn't get a, 100, a, a date with a $100 bill taped to his forehead. And he's got his Penn State thing on there. But, you, you know, they do these videos every now and then. Uh, why don't women play historical games? Hmm, genius from Penn State. I don't know. Could it be that women would rather wake up in Chad's tent on a dirt bike excursion after a brutal lovemaking session and then ride around on his ATV for an hour that Saturday morning and then go to lunch and then take a picture of themselves on the ATV so they could put it in a TikTok video or on Facebook to make their girlfriends jealous? Or would they rather get in a smelly game store with a bunch of low SMV dudes to play Macedonians vs. Republican Rome? I get dressed in the morning, I'm triggered. I take a shower, I'm triggered. I get in the car, I'm triggered. Crickets, right? Which one are they gonna do? And then this is a, to give you an idea of how smart these guys are. Look at the people they talk to. They talk to the girl from the 40k couple. They talk to a fucking insta thought. That's what they were. Her and her husband are Instagram models. Now, if you ask me. His husband had better put a baby in that woman because she's older than me. I can tell by the bags forming under her lo uh, under her eyes there that she has hit the wall and she is not stopping. So he better get her knocked up and that guy, he kind of settled. He's, he's a good looking dude. He's probably above six feet. Probably has six pack abs. Maybe not such a big dick. <laughs> he doesn't strike me as having any equipment bigger than a McDonald's chip. So, uh, that aside, uh, when, when you get those guys and uh, they start making videos, they have the production value, they have the time, they have the money, and now the worst part I can think of is that I had to sit through six commercials just to watch the video that I didn't finish. All to get an answer, yes, historical war gaming is dying in the United States, and I gave you all the reasons why it's dying in prior videos. So, check out, I am a war gamer. Check out, are your standards ridiculous? Don't forget to check out, women suck at war gaming, deal with it. Other than that, I really can't give you a better response to this video other than war gaming itself is hard, tedious work. Just really hard, tedious work. Uh, this, what I'm doing right here at my table, it's not fun, but it's a labor of love. And, you know, when I said the collectors are really only 2% of the population here in the States, I am 100% right with that statement. I'm sure Mr. Penn State doesn't have the collection that I have. He's got all that money, all that weaponry... You know, but he doesn't have the miniature collection because he's not willing to put in the time. Or he's not willing to pay someone to do it. This is probably a guy who could literally afford to pay somebody full time to paint his endeavors. That, and that would be that guy's entire job. But he doesn't. And uh, you also, you know, you have to uh, think about your average normie. Your average normie in the States is a fucking slob. End of story. 
You don't need to go much past that. Um, you have a disappearance of history in high school. You can go ask any 10-year-old to 17-year-old, who is Ike Eisenhower and what did he do? And if they're coming from the public school system, you're going to get this blank. Miss Grundy, what's Ike Eisenhower? And she'll say, just make it about football, Moose. Or she'll say, or uh, let's see. Uh, Miss Grundy, what's Ike Eisenhower? Just make it about makeup, Veronica. There you go. <laughs> that, that will be the entire subject in high school. Just make it about makeup, Veronica. Just make it about football, Moose. And we're getting to the point where our boys are so fat that they're not even playing football anymore. They're just getting bigger tits than their moms these days. So you have an undisciplined population that uh, doesn't like hard work. They just want everything to be easy. And uh, you know, I wish a lot of those people who are riding in, uh, what do you call it, Washington right now, who want everything to be easy, would just move to Canada, which I call America on easy mode, but they don't. They bitch and they bitch and they bitch and, you know, this is why we can't have nice things. So, uh, you know, I, I really feel for Warlord. It's a hard business. It's a hard racket to be in, you know. Uh, I've, I've tried to get a lot of my friends into historical gaming, you know. It's, it's too hard for people to paint up a barbarian army or a... Germanic army or it, it, and painting Macedonian sucks. It's really hard. I've got a process that I'm trying. It's kind of new and uh, You know, so you, they don't have the time and they don't want to have the time They'd rather sit on their ass collect welfare and watch Tiger King and then make YouTube videos about how uh, They pretend to miniature war game and there you go so uh, what did we learn today Really, what I've been saying for the last uh, year with my ramble videos. Every now and then I get out, I do a little speech about da, 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 da. this is why it is. And people call me a crazy person, a racist, or whatever. That's fine by me. You can cry all you want, but it's not going to make your dildo any bigger, you dildo licker. I'm Holy Diver. I hope you enjoyed tonight's presentation. As you know, YouTube has many features you can use to interact with me. You can like the video, dislike the video, comment, or subscribe. But until I see you again, beware of Penn State. And stay metal, my friends. Even you, puppy dog. Hey, you need to grow a sack.